This week on DeBoss Garage, I have a pencil in my ear because we're putting a roof on a garage. So it's been a crazy summer. It's been extremely busy. Um, trying to keep my head together and it's just time right now to get out of the shop enjoy Canada's wonderful nature. We've got beautiful backdrop of corn, windmills. It's about 5, 10 degrees Celsius. Birds are chirping. Um, it is the perfect time to get out and put a steel roof on this shingled garage. It's a nice, nice garage. Um, nice dormers and gables, which makes it a pain for the steel. But um, I don't really like putting steel, on, barn steel on houses and that, but because of the dormers and that, it actually, uh, um, won't look that bad. So we're going to start by trimming the sides, uh, taking the um, little overhang off. It's got about a half inch overhang. That looks crappy with the trim afterwards and along the bottom. And then we'll start strapping. So here we go. So you can take an old saw blade, like really old, <laughs> and, and set the depth and trim a little bit along the edge, which, you'll have to, which we had to do on the other side. This side, the shingles break off nice and easy. Um, you just want to get rid of this little overhang here so that your new trim uh, fits nice and neat. Good time to uh, clean your eavesdrafts. And we don't remove the shingles just because it doesn't hurt to keep them on there. We strap right over top and then put the steel on it. It really reduces the noise of the rain hitting the, shing uh, the steel. If there was nothing, it gets really loud when it rains. Not that that matters because it's a garage, but if you were doing a house, 100% leave the shingles on. If you had a torrential rain with the steel, um, because it's a steep 12-12 a steep, uh, pitch, the rain wants to come down quickly in between the ribs on the steel and come right back up on the flashing. Um, there's nothing wrong with leaving this flashing on there. If you had a small leak, it would just run down the shingles and come down anyway. We're not going to have that leak because we're going to do it right. But I'm saying if. It's like having a spare engine in the trunk. So when you blow up the engine in the front, you just push a button and then you use the one on the back and you still finish your race. Never mind. We're, we're shingling. Here we go. Alright. So we got the edges all stripped. Ready to start throwing some wood down. We got two and three eighths inch nails because we're just going through one by four. Uh, I haven't fired up this old Milwaukee in about 10 years. See how it does. And when we lay the wood down, uh, it's important to remember that you always get the crap wood that is on the edge of the tree. So when you're nailing the strapping down, do not have the curved side up because then it becomes a nice little slide. So make sure you got a nice sharp edge because you will be walking on it. Don't be shy with the nails. Um, because you are walking on it. You don't want the steel to come off afterwards. And remember when you're using a ladder on concrete, it's probably best to support it by something so that the legs don't start walking off. Um, and then you go down because that's a, that's a ways down. So um, I'll throw a harness on. So you're asking yourself, all right, which tools are the best? I got to have the best of the best. Well, um, we've got Hitachi nails in a Milwaukee air nailer cut by a Makita skill saw and measured with a DeWalt um, tape measure. But you're only as smart or as good as the operator and I'm pretty dumb so it's attached with a tape boss so you don't forget those measurements. Uh huh, huh? <laughs> start nailing, here we go. So I always start with the outside one and just butt it up. Uh, you don't even need this piece per se because the trim will cover it. But what I find is it really blocks the wind from ever getting underneath, uh, keeps rodents out, and it's only one piece is one by four. Stop being so cheap. Having your first piece of strapping is, is straight along with the bottom of the roof is super important. Um, you can take a measurement from the top down, but um, really this is impossible to work on uh, until you start building the strapping. So you just want to make sure that this is straight because you're going to take three pieces of one by four and cut them so that the tops are all the same and then use them as spacing blocks. So you're going to cut them. If we want two foot spacing, you're going to measure the width of the wood and then subtract that from two feet and then lay three pieces down and put your wood on top of that. Now you want three because the wood will have a crown in it. So 
nail one end of it, then go halfway in between, put your other block, nail that, and then raise or lower the third piece to accommodate for the bow and the wood. Once you have five or six pieces of strapping, then you might want to throw tape on it and measure back down, make sure that you're still staying two foot centers. At the end of the day, you have four inches to work with. And if you can't line up four inches from one end to the next, um, you got issues. So uh, you might want to stop and hire somebody. But for us, we'll just lay a piece of strapping down, bang away, and until we get to a dormer where we will have to pull the trim off the bottom and all the way along the sides and put the steel and the flashing underneath it. Um, we'll butt up to the, the eaves. They are nailed to the roof. Uh, we'll put a piece of flashing um, underneath there. We'll get there eventually and then put new uh, valley on that on top. So here we go. It's important that your nails are set below the surface of the wood. If you go on an angle and a tip is sticking out, the steel will heat up and, and shrink in the sunlight and it eventually it'll rust a hole through. So uh, take your time, keep your hammer handy. If you're low on air or you pinch your line, um, you're gonna wanna nail that down uh, and make sure that that is nice and tight. Now I don't have to be too, too worried about the valley. The valley is a good um, foot wide, I believe. So, and we don't wanna put nails in the middle anyway. Um, so you can go right to the end. You can cut it back, whatever you like. It doesn't really matter all that much. You can run a strip along the center. We might do that, um, but we'll uh, worry about that in a little bit. So we've got everything strapped nicely all the way up into the top. I didn't continue there because I want to double check that we match up 100% on the other side. So, um, also that row of strapping ends up eight inches down from the top, which is perfect for our ridge cap. But I got to pull the capping off, then nail that one. So it's cut the size. We just leave it there, one nail in there. We'll put that up when we have the capping. Uh, I don't have the steel yet, so I don't want to pull that off because uh, um, I don't want it to leak. So we'll move our little get up here over to the other side. You might be able to go forward fast, but if you can go slow backwards with a hay wagon, first shot. <laughs> Look at that, inches away. And now he's just being fussy. He can, he, he, he's fine, he can do it. Okay, so we're inside because it's, it's cold outside. <laughs> and I couldn't convince Aaron to join me up on the roof because it's a little too steep. So we're gonna finish off by basically going over this dog house. Well, it doesn't need it, but we're gonna put the leftover uh, cover sheets on this and make it nice and new and then explain to you in good detail how to do the thin roofing. So here we go. So we've trimmed the overhang off of our shingles. We're also gonna have to remove our ridge cap because most of the steel is gonna have a vented ridge. Either individual sections that are vented or the entire ridge is vented. We'll get into that afterwards, but we gotta pull these off. Now I've never been a fan of two layers of shingles. I don't recommend that ever and if you're gonna put tin over top of shingles it's okay to do one layer uh you can't do two because then the trim doesn't match up anywhere anymore unless you become very specific with the people that bend the trim for you also your nails are going through two layers of shingles not ideal so hopefully it's just one layer of shingles we can send a guy to the moon but we can't come up with a roof that lasts longer than 15 years it's kind of sad okay so if you have rafters and your ceiling goes right up to your rafters there's no real reason to ventilate the roof. If you have a ceiling and trusses, this spot in here gets really hot. That's why you need to vent the roof. Um, I told you to cut two inches off of the top. I'm not gonna do that on this one, only because this is all vented on the outside and this is for demonstration purposes only. But that's why you vent your roof. So I'm going all out Dutch and using leftover skids for strapping because I'm Dutch. I used my skill saw blades to trim the shingles on the other house, so I'm left with my trusty husky. Hey, look at that. 
that'll work. Okay, so you might notice that this fold is backwards. That's because this is actually drip edge this way for a wall steel. But it's the same design when you go to a drip edge. I'll show you the two different kinds, but we'll just nail this in for now. So years ago, we just used the drip edge all the way around, but you could see the cut edge. You want to have your steel hanging out over past um, the, the drip edge. Uh, the new stuff that we used on the barn here, I don't know, I've been out of the barn scene a little bit, but this is what we use now, um, which is much nicer because it takes the, the steel, brings it to the edge, and then basically just covers it all up. So you don't even have to be 100% perfect. Um, get it close to within a quarter inch and then put this uh, nicely over top. I hate looking into gaps. So uh, this uh, is about an inch on mine. So we make an inch cut, fold this down and then make a straight cut down. So um, birds don't make nests in there and bees and whatever else. Um, you can take this corner, fold it over and behind as well. But that's what we're aiming for. I don't have enough of this left over. So we're going to have to go with the drip edge, but you get the idea. So if you're not great at doing the, the peaks, they sell corners for it, uh, like a little finishing top piece. And you gotta know your peak, whether it's 412, 1212, 1012. If you wanna make your own, um, basically you wanna tuck one side in behind the other. Take your square and you know what's a, say it's a 1212 uh, pitch. You can line up 12 on your squares or 12 and then 12. If it's four, you put four on one side and 12 on the other. Uh, for this, we'll do three and three, which is a 12, 12. There's your, you make a line like that. You can cut that. That will be your, your piece that's showing. And then cut not quite the same amount out on the other side, meet it to the point, and you can tuck it in behind. Then, then on the peak, you have a nice, a nice line going straight up and just cut that little overhang piece off. And you have a nice finished peak like that. Don't leave a space in behind. If you leave a space, the heating and the cooling of the steel will expand and contract it. And then you see light, even though it's up on the peak, you still want it to finish off and look nice. And the, the same applies for when you're doing a cut like this. I'm just running out of space. So this is the profile of your steel. Uh, your first sheet is Extremely critical to get a square on the side of the building and if it's a long sheet It helps to have two guys who who are doing the same thing problem is I put the screws on the ridge uh, We do that uh, for the snow as the snow sits on it and melts um, There's the least amount of chance of water to get in behind the screw if it's on the ridge if it's down below All that snow and ice is sitting on there and water's getting in now when you're putting uh, screws in here you have the chance of of pulling it down too tight and think of it as a piece of paper if you put it in too tight you can you can basically do this with the steel and what, what's going to happen is you're going to walk yourself right off of the roof or right onto the roof and you're not going to stay square anymore so when we did we, especially when we did our barns with long runs say a 140 foot barn every sheet we measure on uh, an inch overhang on the bottom and then we measure an inch overhang on the top. And we can tell the, the guy at the top or the bottom either stretch or shrink your steel. You can counteract it and try to predict where your steel is starting to go. Um, if you're starting to walk onto the roof, your only chances to fix that are to sawtooth it, which looks terrible, um, or you run out of your overhang. So just keep that in mind. So on, the, on our barn there, uh, we had our blocks in between to make sure that the strapping was spaced equally uh, around. For this one, it's just a doghouse, so we can measure it at uh, 4 inches, 21 and a half, and the top one doesn't matter because we're going to put our ridge cap on and then go into it. We pre-drill the, the steel with a 5 30 seconds drill bit. What that does is make the hole slightly bigger than what the screw is. Uh, and allows for the expansion and contraction of the steel in the hot and the cold climate. So um, here in Canada, we've got plus 30 degrees Celsius to minus 2830. Um, so a 60 degree temperature change does a lot to the steel. And you can actually hear it when the sun hits it from behind a cloud. You can hear it crackling and expanding and contracting again. Um, so you gotta, uh, you gotta allow the steel to be able to do that by making the holes bigger than what the, what the actual screw is. 
when I cut, I don't close my snips all the way. I find every time you close the snips all the way, it leaves a little bit of a mark. When you're drilling, uh, support the steel on the bottom. What happens if you don't, if it's on a skid and it's hanging out past, um, the bottom sheet will push away like this. It'll grab your drill bit and it'll snap it. Um, and uh, there's only so many 532nd drill bits around. So line up all your steel so it's nice and flush. Uh, if you've got a giant stack, um, you can put a block of wood up against it and top it with a sledgehammer, nice and even. Um, and definitely make sure that there's no shorter sheets kind of tucked in behind at the bottom of the pile. If there is, you got to move the pile. Depends on whether uh, you've got different size sheets or not. Don't take for granted that the longest sheets are at the bottom of the pile. When you drill those, you might drill some holes in some sheets that you don't want in that particular spot. Now when you do drill, you get these little shards and those are burning hot and the spinning of the drill bit actually makes them magnetic. Roof steel, it's fine, you don't need to clean it off, but wall steel, you're gonna have to brush every single sheet off before you hang it. These will start to rust over time and they'll kind of burn into the paint um, and it'll look like a whole bunch of brown spots around each hole. Um, not very desirable. So even though it speeds up the efficiency like crazy, if you grab the sheet, have a rag, start from one end and wipe all of it down to the other side. Never had those little pieces scratch the paint, but definitely had the rust show up. Now this steel, you can see that both ends are exactly the same. So it doesn't matter which one your lapping edge is. Some will only have this extra little fold on one side, and that is the side that goes over top of the other rib. I don't drill the last hole that um, the next sheet goes over top because I don't find they line up 100%. And if the hole is close, it'll grab the, the steel and move it in a direction you don't want. So that hole, uh, unfortunately, doesn't have the 532nd hole in it. It is what it is. The wall steel, you want to go with more of aesthetics. So if you're coming in on the driveway, you want to start at the back and work your way to the front because the laps, you won't see the laps. On the roof, it takes a lot of abuse in those storms and you want to make sure that the water doesn't crawl underneath uh, when that happens. So whatever your prevailing wind comes from, work towards it. Um, this is doghouse. It might move a hundred different spots. <laughs> so we're going to start at this one. The first sheet, if your house isn't entirely square or because they didn't measure the, uh, the overhang quite right, you want to do an aesthetic uh, overhang of the steel if you don't have the trim that hides it and then fix your overhang as you go by stretching and shrinking. If we wanted to stretch, I would take this outside rib, I would angle it, angle the screw like crazy grab it and see what's happening. We'll put a line here on the, on the trim. Watch, watch what happens. See how I'm able to pull that? I would put a screw in the rest of the ribs and I would come back and I would fix this bottom one. Now to shrink it, I would put my screw straight in. I would lift up just a little bit and put my, put my sheet in. See how much I've left there? Now if you do that repeatedly, you could walk your sheet off in a matter of three, four sheets. You're already running into issues. We're going to measure our overhang. Right here is about five eighths. I'm okay with that. And right there is five eighths. I'm happy with that. Now I've dented this rib because I've pulled too hard stretching or shrinking it. Um, that's uh, a sacrifice I have to make on one or two ribs to, to make up for the overhang. When you're putting your actual screws in, you want to bottom out and just start to see the rubber start to react with the steel and then stop. One of the biggest mistakes is people just go way too deep, start kinking the steel. That is absolutely not what you want. When we lay our next sheet on top, push down on the rib, make sure it's flush and do the bottom first so that we line up the sheet itself and then go right to the very top and do the top one. If you do any of these first, your seams won't line up very well and it'll start to look like crap. So don't do that. Um, if you are cutting the sheets, make sure that the factory edge is on the bottom. You can hide your ratty cut pieces underneath the ridge cap and have fun. Do it nice and efficiently. Um, communicate with the other guy at the other end of the, the steel. When you're doing 
a long barn and you're starting at the back and you're ending up in the front, you can, it's a small chance that you end up actually on the ridge. When you're about four or five sheets back, you can measure that and you can actually shrink the whole sheet to make it so you don't end up on the ridge. If you do end up on the ridge, um, hopefully you have the trim that covers it over and you can go back. We can't really make up for it because our dog house is so small, but with a, with a long barn or a house, you have that option to kind of stretch and shrink if you make it to that very end. Um, otherwise, you're gonna end up being able to see your screws on the ridge pointing in. We also have a little jog here with a little piece that sticks out. Um, just keep that in mind when you're doing the house yourself. Because we drilled the whole pile all at once, we start at the front on the one side, then work our way around and end up on the other side. So to keep this edge kind of nice because we've got that overhang on the, on the top there, we're gonna shrink this bottom a little bit. Push that down. I'm gonna stretch the top. If this stretching method doesn't work for you, you can put the next sheet kind of just off a little bit and then take the sheet and try to pull it onto the next rib. Um, that's another way to kind of stretch it. You can do that better with shorter sheets than you can with the longer ones. So what we can do is pull this sheet a little bit, see it coming up on the rib. We can put these screws in. Try and you don't get too, too greedy. We can put one in the flat underneath here and it'll be hidden by the ridge cap. Just to pull that seam tight. We still have a decent overlap and we've managed to stretch it just enough to stay onto our overhang. Okay, we have our steel here. Um, separated them to see what we actually have. This is our capping, so that's all the way last. We don't have to unwrap that. We've got two packages of this trim, which is the side trim. This will be the drip edge, more or less. So that will go along the bottom of the uh, roof. This is our flashing down the, um, down the side. So that will go on the side of our dormer, going up on the angle. And this is our um, flashing that has the profile of the roof cut into it and that will go along the bottom of the dormer. So what we need to do is take that steel off and raise that up and then um, put that flashing over top of our roof steel and then put that steel back on again. Kind of tricky, but I don't think we'll get that far today. The prevailing wind is actually from uh, this side here and we have a little bit of a windbreak with these trees, um, but I can't see an issue. Uh, we're basically, because it's tricky walking on the steel and stuff, because of the 12 12 pitch we're basically gonna have to start from the outside and work our way in i would have liked to start from the inside and work our way out but that doesn't uh isn't gonna work in our situation so we're not gonna do it so start banging up some trim start separating some steel and off to the races all right so we're gonna start by putting our drip edge on um and we're just gonna do that as we go we've got scaffolding set up on our nice little hay wagon here um <laughs> we're gonna slide the steel up uh, if it was a 4 12 pitch or something we might get a crane to even boom it up or get like a scissor lift and, and lift it up on the edge. But because of the steep angle, it's very awkward to carry it across the steel. So we're just gonna move the wagon as we go, slide it up. We got all our holes pre-drilled. Um, so this is the way the steel goes up the building that way. And um, we drill all the holes all at once with a 5.30 second drill bit. Um, it's important to keep in mind which way the steel laps. And you can look at that at the edge. Um, this, this curl goes down and it, and it sits over top of the next rib. It has it on both sides. So it doesn't matter which way this steel goes. Um, most of the prevailing wind comes from, from this side over here and we're doing it for looks. That's why we're starting at the back and working our way to the front. Um, it's very important to, 
uh, stretch and shrink the tops and the bottoms of the steel to keep the overhang a good inch uh, over the drip edge. And we'll, we'll keep that in mind there. Every single sheet needs to be measured and kept perfectly straight for that nice straight uh, edge. Other than that, um, we're good to go. These are only 30 inches wide, which is really handy. Uh, they do make 36 inches in different profiles. We go with 30 inch because uh, we have to screw each panel as we go. And um, 30 inches is reaching is uh, a lot better than 36. It gets kind of awkward after a bit, so here we go. Okay, yeah, there's a nice kitty. So I've been making very many videos and apologize for that. The reason is that it's only me doing this roof, it's for my dad. And uh, I'm on. I'm on the roof and it's kind of awkward up there. It's deep, 12-12 pitch, and the cameras are taking a beating in the pouch and in my pocket. It's actually two weeks after we started because we had SEMA in the middle, and then it rained nonstop for another week. So um, basically, I just want to get this done. There's no wind right now. So right now I have to cut the steel that, that goes around that dormer, and I'm a little bit biased. But honestly, this is the best invention ever. I don't want to cut the steel on the roof because I scratch other steel and I scratch myself. So top down is 105, angle to the left, holes at 9, 33, 57, and 8. Peak is 10 and a quarter from the center of the rib. Top of the peak should be 94. Now, I couldn't write all that down. I just talk. That thing has saved me so many trips up and down. I love it. Go, go get one. Well, uh, lights come on, so that's the end of the day. I got one more piece of ridge cap to put on on that dormer. And of course, I'm one sheet short. <laughs> one sheet short, say that 10 times. But uh, pretty happy with how that all turned out. I'll probably have to put that one on in the snow, which will get really exciting. But I'm not going to put that on camera. And uh, yeah. I'm sore and I'm tired and I got to go before it gets completely dark, but uh, see you in the shop. So this is your vented foam. It, it follows the profile on it, has a little tape on it. Uh, you peel off and then it just sticks to it. I like going down about six inches from the, the peak. That allows the screws to go just a hair underneath a fold in the ridge cap and keeps the screws nice and straight. Our last row of strapping is roughly about here. Keep the birds out, keeps the bees out, but also allows um, the air to come out from that two inch cut that you've done in the peak and go through the, the mesh. So this is ridge cap, goes nicely on top. Um, as you can see, the, the foam closure is just underneath this, this fold. I like putting the screws in the ribs. I don't drill the holes. Um, I don't pre-drill them, but I stick the holes through the, the ribs still, and I try to hit it through that foam closure. If you go on the outside, you start folding the, the, the trim around the foam closure. If you go on top, you have a chance that the foam closure starts uh, um, sliding out over a few years. Um, and, and you always want to leave about an inch longer than the steel is yet. When it's a 12-12 pitch like what we had, there's no way to get around it but to sit on the ridge cap when you're working on it. And when you do that, you actually flatten it out. So when you, before you sit on it, I like to put it in, I line it up with the sheet that's in uh, the, before it, overlap it to the next rib so you can go through two sheets of rib through the ridge and then into your strapping. And you might have to go back and forth a couple times. When you're sitting on it and, and you screw it at the same time, you, you tend to do this with the ridge and you'll start getting walking on it. Now, nobody's ever gonna see that because it's up on the top, but the straighter you can get it, the better it is. If you've got a 412 pitch and you can watch, walk on the steel, even 612, that's fine. When you start getting into 8, 10, 12, it gets a little slippery and you have to put each sheet down 
as you go. If we get the chance next roof, if it's a 412, we'll get into valleys, how to seal those up um, and all the other little bits. Definitely check out our barn build, start to finish from pouring the foundation to putting the garage door in. We have a complete how-to on how to build the uh, barn. Uh, check out Tape Boss, the website, uh, tapeboss.com. You can pick one up right now. There's free shipping for the next little bit. And you can act, use your order number to enter to win our Lincoln welder that we're giving away as well. Stay filthy. Remember, if you're not filthy, you're not rich. Here we go. And you put your hand directly on things like that. That hurts. And just keep your eye open. I don't know who was doing that. Underneath. That hurts. Right in.